it looks pretty bad right now. What happened is the day that we received the robot shipment crate, we also received the Formox new auto feed bandsaw. The problem being, this side of the shop was pretty damn tight in terms of the layout and functionality of it. What's up, y'all? Rebecca Wolfinger of Millspec Manufacturing, along with Curtis Wolfinger of Millspec Manufacturing. Thanks for hanging out with us again for another episode of Becoming a Practical Machinist. So first and foremost, I guess we should say that Curtis and I are toying around with um, a different filming style, hopefully trying to capture life at Millspec more like a vlogging style. Yeah, make it more authentic. I mean, what you guys see is highlights and everything, but see like, you know, the weekly process, be more authentic feeling like, you know, day-to-day -day issues and whatnot. Yeah, because I think if we really want to showcase the journey of starting a machine shop, you should be here even when we feel like it's boring or we're stressed out. Not just like Curtis said, the highlights or the big moments like machine delivery day or talking about like one particular thing. Cause let's be real, having a machine shop is several different things going on at one time. Mm -hmm. And you're questioning your sanity and wondering, should I have a drinking problem? <laughs> we're not there yet. We're, not we're yet. Okay. <laughs> not yet. Close, but not yet. <laughs> so let's go ahead and say the elephant in the room if you take a look right back there, you guys recognize the Formock 1500. And now we have the robot we've been installing this past week. And that's pretty cool. Yep, the ZA6 Tormach robot. I'm hoping that the next episode we do is showcasing that robot and the pallet system. We got the shunk work holding system to work with the robot. Yeah, it's a palletized system. Yeah. For our duty clips, our product line that we're going to be uh, launching. Um, being able to do it by the pallet that this uh, little tool right here would actually be able to pick the pallet up off that table put it into the machine with a zero turn it would be able to locate and just run you know and we've already got it to where it would be able to do that part that would take my hoss an hour to do six minutes in the Tormach. so far the installation process for this hasn't been too bad i think the biggest pain in the ass was so when you do this, you have to take off the the side part panel of this, and you actually put an entire different door on here, which is an auto door. It was complicated, not because it's just screws and you know bolts going into there. What's it called, Sigaflex? Yes, the Sigaflex is simply insane. like a silicone. But when that stuff dries, it is like super glue. Probably even worse than that. Rubber cement. It's like Gorilla Glue on your hair. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was the hardest part. What I found out is rubbing alcohol works really good to soften it. So we got a big bottle of it and I found an old spray bottle that was empty, put it in there and it was just quite literally spraying the entire seams of the Sigaflex, letting it kind of soften and then scraping it and then just wash, rinse, repeat for all day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then just pulling it apart and it was, it, it was we got, uh, yeah. I mean, you could probably throw this machine and the Sikaflex holds the enclosure together. <laughs> so it could fall off a forklift. Yeah. I guess we could show the pallet system a little bit better. All right. So this is the first design, okay? With the shunk work holding system, with this little plug up top is where it would go right into the tool of the robot. So the robot would pick this up. And originally it only had uh, one puck that it would go down into but I was finding an issue with alignments. So what we did was we went with the, like Becca showed you the two puck system. So when the actual pallet would be put down, it would realign itself with that. I have to redesign the pallet. So let's go take a look at it and I'll show you the design of the pallet I got so far, all right? So as you see on the screen here is my pallet design I got so far. And that's where the little plug is for the, the robot to actually come down, pick the pallet up, creating the two holes here for that uh, two puck system for the Vero S. So it'd be able to realign itself and using some mighty bites and fixturing to be able to do multiple ops at one time. All right. And just have the machine, the robot be able to swap it out. It's going to be great. So yeah, this is my chaos corner right now. So when we, 
Curtis is actually using it right now, <laughs> the Harbor Freight bandsaw. When we used it, we would have to pull it out, use it, clean it up, and then like put it up back against the wall because there really just wasn't that much space back here. Realistically, that's not going to be very efficient with the new auto feed bandsaw. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we kind of pulled everything out. We're like, how can we make this flow a little bit more efficient? This is where I'm going to be keeping it at because it's right next to the plug-in. And ideally, I want to try to structure the rest of the shop so that this can be out constantly and there's still a walkway. Okay, so here's my plan. Remember in the video, this entire wall used to be the shipping department. So what I had already did is the stainless steel table that was here, I picked it up and I transferred it to the very back corner of the shop over here. And there was that metal shelf that was holding like the bubble wrap and like the foam insert pockets, documentation, tape, just general shipping supplies. And I went ahead and I repurposed that to hold, you know, like scrap and drop remnants of material because they're still good for something. It's just, I don't need them right now. And they're a little too small to be keeping on our traditional uh, material rack that's right behind me. So now with the table gone and that stuff is eventually going to be put back there too. What I'm going to do is take this material rack that used to be on this wall over here and we're going to bring it over here. So you're going to have this entire wall now instead of shipping, it's going to be all the material storage. That allows me to have this entire floor space open and leave this brand new bandsaw sitting right here. So every time I need it, I don't have to go pick it up, set it up, use it, clean it up and put it back against the wall. It can just stay right out here as it is, but it's gonna allow me to have an entire floor space right here. So it's open and clear and the garage door can move all the way up, down. We can get material in and out and shipping packages, anything of the sort like that. So I think it's gonna work. Let's go ahead and get started and see how it looks. about you guys but I like to recycle as much I guess you could call it packing material just stuff in general because like there's situations where you might have a couple parts that need padded in the box reusing and recycling the stuff works out a lot same thing with like this stuff in the corner I don't know if you can see but like big pieces of foam sheets there's some uh cardboard panels and stuff you never know what you're gonna need as long as I have the space for it and it's not too cluttery I'll just hold on to it because you it saves you money in the long run, not having to run to UPS and stuff. I'd eventually like to get, it's like these big rollers that go on the wall and it holds it like this. That would be nice for bubble wrap. And then we use these totes a lot for local customers. What we'll do is pack them and then they usually inspect the parts right then and there and give us back the totes for the next order. So that works out pretty nice having reusable stuff. So it's looking a lot better now. Actually, I think I might like it better than where it was because it's a little bit brighter. So a while back, I made an episode where we painted the shop. We rebranded our website and everything and got a bunch of these pictures printed out. You've probably seen around the shop. And I always tell people when you're building a company, make sure you're branding it something unique that you love so that it's recognizable because there's little details that you do really make your shop memorable. What's what you want because you want customers to be like, hey, Mill spec's pretty damn cool. I'm going to send my parts to them. You know, I think people over look how beneficial making something look nice can be for your company. You know, when you look nice, just like clothes that you're wearing, people want to work with you. Appearances matter in both personal and business life. Okay, can you see it kind of taking shape? Here's my aisle way I was talking about. I kind of got the idea of taking this cabinet, which used to be in the very back of the shop for storage, and why not go ahead and pull deburring up here? And I can probably throw it underneath this window right here. But we have the grinding wheel, and then of course, I'm sure a lot of people also have like power drills, and you can put like chamfering tools on the end of it too. The problem is, 
inside of here has been like a bunch of our like chemicals and everything. Oh, it's really wobbly. I need to put a piece of wood on the back of it and rebrace it. If I leave it up here, I got to fit all this stuff and put it in the back, which is fine because if you guys remember again from the remodel, we invested heavily into getting all sorts of cabinets in the very back. So I guess I'll just make one of those like the chemical cabinets and then go ahead and put like all of our chemical detailed data sheets and everything back there with them. Might look a little bit better. Now, actually, it might be beneficial that there's no backing to this cabinet because I think I could probably leave all the charging ports and stuff in here and just feed it out. Maybe when I make a new back, I can just leave a hole for the cord to feed through. All right, here's how she's looking so far. We will walk straight through. Did you happen to notice that there was something missing where the new shipping department was going? It was the laser engraver and the 3D printer. So what we did is we just picked up the whole table and shoved it beside the Tormach in our office area. So it actually works out pretty nice. Overall, I think everything is gonna be a little bit more of an improvement with the, the flow and how everything's set up. I think he likes it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So far, we have not named the robot, and we like to name pretty much all the equipment in our shop just because it's easier to talk about it and be like, oh, so-and-so needs fixing or coolant checked or something. So the VF4 that we have, we named her the mistress because when we first started the business, <laughs> Curtis was the only one that was really like working at the brick and mortar for the longest time, and I'd be like, oh, you're spending the night with the mistress because she would work long hours through the night. Yep, she kept me away from home. <laughs> and uh, we went a little bit more like vintage World War II-ish, so the Tormach's name is Tammy. So now we got to figure out another vintage type name for the robot. You know what? Let's leave it to the the followers. Yeah. You know, comment down below about what name you think the robot should be. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun. That would be pretty fun. <laughs>